I'm not quite sure when he started playing Counter-Strike, but he was uh, playing computers with his uh, big brother. In school, Nikolai was um, not a top A student. He was uh, more interested in computers. Well, Nikolai started out as a young star in the Danish Counter-Strike scene. And his passion, I wouldn't say it was there for Counter-Strike right from the beginning, because he was also playing badminton. Nikolai uh, started playing badminton from he was five or six years old, and uh, clearly very talented. He just understood the game. My mom gave me a racket when I was two years old in the garden. My mom wanted me to play badminton a lot more, and it's hard to explain when you're 14, 15, that you actually want to play a video game. He was playing at the, the top level team in our city. One of the big clubs in Denmark was asking if he would play with them but he said no. It was always like a 50-50 for me, and in the end it was an injury in the knee that made me decide. I'm really good at this Counter-Strike game, I should continue with that. So when I got the call to the best team in Denmark, I had this feeling in my head that was kind of split. You know, you have this huge talent, and back then it was kind of hard to actually realize what it's worth like compared to now, because back then the viewership and the price pools were a lot lower. I watched this DreamHack Winter 2012, I think. It was a big tournament back then. I thought in my head, I can be as good as these guys, maybe even better. In the beginning, when he was playing a lot, we were being the parents. We were saying, uh, you are playing too much, you have to go outside. I went to my first big LAN event it was the Europe National Championships, and we actually won that, and it was the first time the Danish media covered it, like it's news. That's when I realized this is something big. This is something really big. When I first met him, I didn't know he was device. His strength as a player is definitely that many times you can see Nibla having a bad half, but steps up and if the team are playing bad, he's really good to like, come on guys, we need to do this and we can still do this even though we are behind. We have seen the comebacks before, we can do it. One of the things about Nikolai and his skill level is that it has always been really high. We played uh, together in his first team. Back then he was uh, a little uncontrollable. He tend to do his own thing. And I think his skill level today is kind of similar to back then. But the difference is that he has a lot of experience to go along with the talent. He has the whole package, but not until now that he has experience to control it. Device is one of the best players in the world. And he might not consider himself one of the best players in the world, but he is. And when we come to his opponents, they know that you shouldn't take meeting him lightly, because he is as good as he is. Nikola puts a lot of pressure on himself. He thinks that when people see him as a top player, he wants to perform and wants to live up to what people are thinking about him. If you think too much about it and when you play, it will hurt your confidence and your mentality to be able to perform. I use running to clear my mind. It's something that helps me refocus and it's basically a part of my training. I think I need to stay fit in both my mind and my body to be able to perform at a high level. Nikola as a person doesn't want to be the best, but he wants the team to be the best. He knows how it works to be on a top team, even in-game and outside the game. Nikola is one of the, the few players on the Danish Counter-Strike scene that has a mentality of not only being the best, but also behaving as one of the best.